Hey friends, welcome to Tech Harvesting. In today's video, we are going to have a look at how we can use the console object other than the console log function. We usually use the console log function only, but this time we're going to have a look at a lot of other functions that you can use within the console object, like console error, console table, and more. This is going to make it much easier for us to use the console object and it'll boost our productivity with JavaScript to the next level. So let's get started. We have two files in here index.html and a script.js and it's in a folder in here as you can see so i've opened this up with live server if you don't have it just go ahead and install the live server extension from the extensions panel and you can right click here and open it live server which is what i've done and as you can see i've opened up the console and i have the website open up in here there's going to be no content in here but that's how it is so i just have the console open so right now in the script i'm just logging out hello so in this video, we'll be going over multiple steps to improve our console log productivity, like tips and tricks with the console. And the first one is actually a uh, two of them. So the first two are gonna be console.log, I mean console.error and console.warn. So you can just type in here console error and console warn. So we usually do console.log, right? And we log in some data. But now we can do console.error with a function and you can pass in the same thing. And if you were to return back in there, you'll see that it, it's formatted as an error. And it has where the error this is from logged from just like a normal log, just that it's formatted like that with the red color and a cross. You can also use the console.warn. So I'm replacing this log with warn. And if you return here, you can see it's now a warning with the yellow color so that's the use of console warn and console error we always use console log most of the time but we can use the warn and error functions too on the respective places where we need them the next thing is console.table this is a very very useful uh, function which is used like if you have huge amounts of data like an array or an object and we want them to form uh, be displayed in a way that we it's readable where we can read easily, then we can use console.table. In here quickly, languages, and let's have a few properties. So name, JavaScript, and let's create a quick copies. And for example, Python, Golang, etc can add more obviously this is an example and then we can do console.table and here we can pass in the languages array so if you return here right now you can see we're doing this nicely formatted table with the index of the array item and the name too and it's also having this drop down where we can click and it shows us everything as a normal object so that's going to be very useful if you have a huge amount of data and obviously we can add more keys in here so for example i'll just add and for example just create some other keys in there if you head back here now in the table we'll have another column here with the name of that key so that's how it works it's really really useful and again, it's mostly used for printing out huge amounts of data like an array or it can again be used for small things like what we did right now. A dir function. This is very useful if you're trying to print out HTML elements or something to the console. So for that, first I'm just going to create an element in here. For example, nh1, hello. I'm going to give an ID. And we can pass in the ID as... Hello. Next, in the script, I'm going to select that element. So we can do const hello equals document dot get element by ID, and the ID is hello as we gave it in here. So that's going to return us this element, which is the h1, and just console dot log it. So we can give hello. Now, if you were to come here. And let me just reload the page once. You can see that our h1 is there. And if we return here, you can see this is what we are getting as the output. 
just a reference to the element. We are not able to see the properties of the element, like its value and everything, which is not what we want. We want to see every properties, functions, everything inside this element, this HTML element. So for that, we are not going to be using console log, but we can use console dir. If we come back here now, we can see that once it reloads, we are getting this element here. This is the log. This is the dir. If you click in there, we're getting all the properties inside that. So this is much easier to use when compared to the console log of the object, the element, because that just gives us the reference. So if you click on it, it just selects it in here, which is not what we want. We want to be able to see all the properties inside it. So that's another very cool feature. Console clear function. So this is very simple to do. Just do console dot clear. And just call it like that and what happens is if it were to reload right now it'll just clear it and say console was cleared from this line and everything like that so that's all it does this function just clears the console right now I'm just gonna comment it out because we don't want to clear the console every time we want to see all these okay so the next is the console dot group function this is also really useful for formatting data so for example if I were to create a group so console dot group hello then I can have some logs so console dot log log one then I could have a log two and a log three and then I could do console dot group end and this is actually not required the parameter in here so this is what it is. So we, when we do this, it displays all these three logs inside a group. So if you come back here, you can see we get this group and we get all the logs in there. We can also pass in something here, hello, which is what we did first. And if we wait for it to reload, you see we get it as a label in here. So that's what it is. It's really simple and it's used for uh, grouping data. We can again use this with console error console warn and all but right now i just use console log so that's console.group next let's have a look at console.time this is really useful and helps us to find the time taken to execute a specific command so for example i'm going to do console.time and this takes in a label so for example we can go for loop and then you can for example execute a for loop which will take some time so you can do for i equals zero i phi i plus plus you can just console dot log i and then we can just go ahead and do console dot time end so I'll, I'm going to show you what is the use of this function soon but we just have two functions like group and group end time and time end and here we need to give the same exact label so we can just copy that and paste it in here and now if we were to run come back here you can see it took this much time for the for loop to execute now if I were to change this 5 to 100 or 1000 and if I return here, we can see it took even more time. So that's what happens here. It just tells us the time taken to execute the functions between the time and time end. So it starts a timer in here, waits for everything to execute, and then it stops the timer here and gives out the timer's output in here. This is also extremely useful. For example, if you have a request, we can get to know how much time the request took without looking in the network tab you can directly get to know about it in the console itself so that was it for this video i just wanted to show you how you can use different functions in the console object and make your life much easier with javascript so make sure you subscribe and i'll see you in the next video bye friends